Hex. How are you? Hey, Sherry. How's things? Is it still morning for you? If so, good morning. It, it is barely. It's uh, five minutes to 11, so oh. for a little bit longer. Yeah, I hope you will. I'm doing good. How are you? Great. Yeah, just, I was just across from the Avi chill vibe space, and I saw your space, so I thought I'd come up and say well done for the other day where you uh, made a position, a statement on the, something I, I agree with about the playing of the audio tape. So before anyone came in, I thought I'd say well done to you. Well, I appreciate that. And, you know, I know why it was played for sure, um, but I just didn't want it to be on a loop like some of those other fun uh, trolls, you know, the re the montages, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 100%, we, yeah. So I understand why it was played, and, you know, I'm not mad at him by no means, but I hear he's been taking some heat and I've been busy, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I think it's right to be able to criticize that particular audio tape for all the reasons you mentioned. Uh, it's not cool. There's other people involved that aren't able to have a right to reply. Or people that care about them might hear about it. It's, it's, it's gross, in my opinion. And I think you're it, absolutely right. Yeah, it is gross. And it's not fair because she is unaware that it's happening. And and since day one, I've always said the person has the right to be here to defend themselves or we shouldn't be saying it. So correct. I just think that. And this is, you know. It's so gross. It, it really just is a whole different level of disgusting. And it just we just got to be aware that there's a young lady involved. And, and guess yep. what? We don't know if it's true or not. We've not heard her side of the story. I mean, there's so many holes to be filled and no pun intended at all. But, um, you know, it's just not right, in my opinion. So whatever. Well, the problem is every time it gets replayed, it breathes life into it again. Just let it die on the vine months months ago. Uh, yeah. An unfortunate incident happened. Just let let it die. Don't keep on breathing life back into it. It ignites beefs. It ignites controversy. People will use it just to use its sake. And I don't understand why anyone would want to keep this thing alive for the life of me. Just let it go away. Everyone's had their say. Apologies have been given. Let it go. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if you were in that space a month or so ago that, you know, I said I had access to it and I was choosing not to replay it. But mm. Even though I knew people didn't even believe that what we were saying was true, you know, I chose not to replay it for many reasons. Um and I just think that's the way to go about it. I agree with you. So, hey, Donna. Hey. How you doing, love? I'm all right. Just tired. I'm be all right. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Full of beans. <laughs> Glad to hear it. There's not much that gets me down, Donna. I'm resilient like that. <laughs> be, uh, yeah, apparently, I've been catching some hatchets, but they don't even get on my radar. My radar, I'm just like, okay, whatever. You know, come on, what guys. The hell are you taking hatchets for? I don't fucking know. Good, um, I, I just get, you know, you know what it happens, Sherry. You, you you know this. I do. You hear, you hear about alleged hatchets coming your way. You don't hear them yourself. You just hear reports of, you know, that kind of thing. Dot dot yeah. dot. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not playing that game. Exactly. <laughs> the best way to go about I'm it. I'm too long in the tooth to mess around with, uh, you know, hypothetical hatchets that I've got no idea what's about or the context around them. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Right on. Well, let's talk about some fun stuff. Cool. Um, you have your dates booked for Vegas? Not yet. I've got to... I'm, my um, sister-in-law let me down looking after my um, broken down old lovable spaniel. He's blind, so I've got to be careful of where so he's the love of my life. I've got to watch out. I've got, I've got to make sure he's comfortable. I can't put him in the kennels because he'll never survive it. Oh, so. so you need a babysitter. I need a loving family to take him in that he knows for uh, three weeks. So. Right. It was all lined up. Now, uh, unfortunately, um, 
she can't look after him anymore. So there's a few more options. So I'm just trying to get that sorted before I start booking flights, as you can imagine. Yeah, because three weeks is a long time. Yeah, That's a yeah. big commitment for somebody, and you know, Correct. hopefully somebody will step up for you. Oh, I've got I've got quite extended family, so it's it's more I'm I'm terrible for leaving him anyway. So if I don't feel like he's uh, in a place he knows and the people that he knows with, then I won't do it. Of You've course. Got of course. Yeah, but I'm That's looking forward to Vegas. If it comes off, it'd be great. Can't wait. Oh my god, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy fun. That's all I can say is it's going to be crazy fun. <laughs> and I think I've decided um, instead of staying the whole two, two and a half, three weeks, I think I'm just going to come for like four or five days and then go back to my daughter's and then come back for the latter part of June, early part of July. Yeah, that's a great way of doing it because it can – it can take Vegas can just take you over, right? I mean, especially me. Jesus Christ. For sure. Well, I can't and just I, dip home, you know. <laughs> it's a long flight. Right. And <laughs> I've been and I've been there for just under three weeks before. But the problem for me is I left home on February twenty second and I'm gonna be at my daughter's through June. And so I'm already home away from home for several months. So Two weeks in Vegas just doesn't sound appealing to me this year. It's too much. Can you do like an open-ended trip? I mean, have you got a book, absolute dates? I mean, uh, that might be an option for you. Well, and normally what I do is buy my ticket out there and the, uh, just a one-way, and then I don't do my return flight until it gets a little closer or even until after I'm out there. But the problem is the second part of the, you know, when I need to be there is around the 4th of July. So t um, ticket prices will be nuts if I wait too long. So I do need to make a decision this week, I'm afraid. Is it just all fun? Or are you going to try and catch some cool interviews and put them on spaces? Is that part of your... I think it's kind of all of, of, of the above. I have a job offer kind of lingering in the wind right now that I'm waiting to hear about. Um, hopefully I'll know something about that in the next week or so as well. And then, of course, Sean's birthday party. So it's kind of a mixture of both. I'm hoping um, I would like for Brian and I to do our daily um, WSOP show like we did last summer. I just don't know what his schedule is going to be like because he has that new job. So we're still trying to figure that out. A lot of irons in the fire right now. Careful you don't overdo it. That sounds like a busy trip already. Well, and that's Got some part... time for some relaxation. <laughs> and that's part of the, I don't know if I want to stay there two and a half weeks where at least if I can do it from home or from my daughter's house, I get a break in between the broadcasts or the interviews, whereas if I'm there, there's no wit, you know, rest for the wicked. Yeah, two weeks in Vegas said crucify me, I'd get up some more shit that I get to fucking think about. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're going to jail, Donna, if you're there two weeks. No <laughs> doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at, least one, one, at least one night in jail, Donna. That's my... <laughs> oh, my God. That would be... <laughs> you'll talk be your horrible. way out of it, but you're going to do one night in jail, and then you'll see a nice, friendly judge. You'll charm his <laughs> pants off, and you'll be out next. It's all right, because I know all the stuff, because I watched that jail. Uh, Las Vegas jail, so I know all the staff that weren't there. <laughs> oh my God, she knows the people. <laughs> She'll be like, hey, Johnny, I saw you on that show. Don't you know I make comments? We chatted in the chat. <laughs> Just imagine Donna making a shiv out of a toothbrush in her cell. It's unbelievable. 
<laughs> her her poke in the wall trying to dig a hole. Oh my god. The memes I could make. Yeah, that's one thing I can say I've never been been done for. I've never got I've never got arrested for anything. <laughs> Knock on wood. Knock on wood. We're not yeah, gonna I've, spoil I've, that. I've had... I've had a drunk tank, I'll admit it. I've been put in overnight for being drunk and uh, disorderly. A good night was had by all. <laughs> He's telling us it was well worth it. <laughs> yeah, it was it, it was no fifty cuffs. It was just, you know, being yeah. outlandish. It's a few too many beers. The exuberance of youth, you know, thinking you can take over the world. We've all been there. Well, some of us have not, but I understand it from an HR point of view because we had, um, I worked in a school system, so anytime somebody would, you know, have an arrest, it was a big deal. But when we would hire, you know, they were always so nervous disclosing the fact that they had been arrested for drunk and disorderly when they were in college or whatever. And we're like, dude, it's not a big deal. You were young and dumb. You haven't been arrested again. And you have you in the last 20 years? No. Okay. <laughs> like, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I will only... Our only female in like there were about fifteen lads, so like I was like mama bear, so like I had to wrangle them all into uh, <laughs> and keep them out in trouble, which I managed to. <laughs> well, my nephew wants to come out with me to Vegas this year, so I'm still wondering with a couple of his friends. So I'm thinking, oh god. A few 20, 21, 22 year olds in Vegas. How am I going to control them? You know, I might have to put them to You better have fatal like. money. Jesus Christ. I know. So I was thinking I've got to buy burner phones to make sure they've got a phone that works out there, put an ankle bracelet on them so I can track their movements. God. It, an air tag comes to mind. An Apple air tag comes there to mind. There you go. Yeah. That, I'll need <laughs> to look into the tech because uh, there's no way I'm letting these boys loose in Vegas. Oh, my God. I'll come home to their mothers wringing my neck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then again, it's a, it's a life experience for these kids, right? you got to let them live. So I'm I agree it. on both angles, but, um, you know, it could be tricky. Um, yeah, they just got to be careful, right? Yeah, well, my nephew's got the same blood as me. He's, he gets the fever, too. So, <laughs> God, God help me. If oh, I take shit. It. Yeah. <laughs> Oh Lordy! Free I, don't mind, I don't mind paying for paying for him. It's just start keeping track of him, and I'll be worrying myself to death as well. I think if he's because uh, they're not going to want to hang around with me all the time. You right. Let these kids go, you know, do their thing. But I don't know how I'm going to concentrate on poker when I've got my fucking nephew uh, set in Vegas on fire. Oh, trust me, when my kids come, yeah, it's a different experience when your kids are in town. Trust me, I know. Yeah, I said to James, I'll take him when he's 21 to Vegas. That's what we did. My kids always wanted to do two things for the first time with each other. Go to Vegas and go on a cruise. And we did both. We had so much fun. Yeah. He says, I'll hold you to that. Because, like, he's pissed off. I'm going here, there, and everywhere. And I went, you've got your life to live. You've got the rest of your life to live. You're only 15, kid. I agree, but you know what I told you about that? It's I know. For mommy to take a vacation with son somewhere. I know. We will be doing next year. All three of us. We've just got to decide where to go. Awesome. Because that's when he finishes his GCSEs and we said, like, if he gets good GCSEs, then we're going on a family holiday. Even if he doesn't, we should be going on a family outing. Oh, I know. I know that. But, like... It's okay. He gets good GCSEs. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. And if this job job offer comes off, then yeah, we're definitely going somewhere nice, which I'm sure it will do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm over the moon for you, Donna, with that job. That sounds great. Well done. So exciting. Thank you. Got headhunted. I know. I remember <laughs> you saying that's 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 a high <laughs> high praise indeed, right? When they Very come much to you. so. Yeah. Yes. Very Love much. It. So. And you're going to be working for somebody you admire, which makes it even more awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very but now, cool. but now doing my CV, it's like looking back and thinking, what have I done? And I look back and I start thinking, and it's like, what the fuck? I've done so much in poker that I didn't even realize I'd done because I didn't get paid for it. Well, and you know, we've talked about this before. When you're passionate about something, you don't mind doing it and you don't look for, you know, you're not counting the volume. You're just enjoying doing what you're doing. Exactly. I mean, the dream is to, to change, to, well, to, to use your beloved hobby and then make that your job, right? I mean, that's a happy life. Yeah, of course it is. 100%. I mean, I've never chased anything. I've never asked anybody for anything. Yet people give me things because they want to. Unlike others who shall be nameless. So I do things because I love to do it and that gets me recognised. And I'm recognised all over the world. And that still shocks me. And I've got a good reputation, so what else can I say? Not a lot to I, that. I hear rumours, Donna, that you're going to be the image of the new £50 note. They're going to put <laughs> your face on the note, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> and not just any note, the big one, the 50. You know? The 50. How's Joe? That's funny. How's Joe? <laughs> Yeah, he's cool, man. But it's weird. We we got off to um. I've I've only knew him in parsley, but now we're playing cards together. We're we're, we're fast friends. We seem to gel quite nicely. And of course, as you can imagine, I'm delightful at the table. So um, yeah, it's really joking aside. It's cool. We've got a nice group of people. There's a WhatsApp group now. So we're playing two five mixed games cash. And it's it's a hoot, but it's um there's some big money coming down. So that keeps me interested. Yeah. It's juice, juicy game. It's invite only, so you you better be good company or or action if you want to stay in the game. You know, and I'm both. Yeah, so yeah. I love Jota bits. He's gorgeous. Sounds like you found a a good home game to play. Yeah, well, it's in the casino, but it's a home game vibe. But yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to find, right, Sherry? You can't just these things are rare. Are rare. Hundred yeah. percent, and and when you find one, you stick to it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, I see some yeah. in our audience. I hope you listen to uh, the replay of our Friday night uh, game because uh, I was your peacemaker, Slay, and I hope you uh, reached out and and uh, grabbed onto the olive branch, my friend. Yeah, Slate's catching hatches these days. I'm not sure I like that. I, I can't think of one thing he's done wrong. I don't know where all this Slate hate's coming from, but I'm not on board. Oh, I've not. I've been too busy, so I have no reference point for what you speak of. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to catch up. It just, I think it's just people just, it's just waves, right? It's someone's turn to get harassed, and they seem to get the brunt of it. I don't understand how it works. It's weird. I don't know. I might have to jump on the Slay Hater train since he is giving me a thumbs down about the uh, Justin Hammer interview. Maybe he just didn't walk, uh, listen to it. Uh oh. Beefy beef fun. time. <laughs> Go ahead, Slay. That's right, Hex. I'm a fucking saint. Yes, I'm you are, my friend. Saint. <laughs> <laughs> And what yeah, you your to? boy fucking Hammer sent me a DM. I ignored him. Fuck that guy. 
Oh, Slay, shame on you. You've always said you will accept an apology. You yeah, just well, it. I'm not ready just yet. <laughs> Fuck that guy. You need and to. Yeah, go- why am I catching hatchets? I'm a fucking gentleman around. I'm a gentleman. And they're trying to hatchet me. It's so true. It's so true, X. Who's trying you got, to hatchet you? got my you? vote, buddy. Who is it? Who is uh, it? They're all trying to hatchet me. Uh oh. Slays under the microscope. The haters come out of the woodworks. What do you expect? This is what happens in these parts. You have a spotless record like me, but somehow you catch hatchets. Well, Are you a church mouse? Say it again, Jeff. Are you a church mouse, Luke? Oh, are you a church mouse? <laughs> Slay, are you a church mouse? You no, church Coco? mouses are quiet. I'm definitely not quiet. <laughs> right? As quiet as a church mouse? I ain't quiet. Right. That's right. one thing right. I'm right. not. Right. Uh, Okay, no shit, no no uh, shits and giggles. Did you listen to Justin interview Slay? Of course not. Slay, that's the last time I'm doing anything on your behalf. I didn't ask you to do anything on my behalf. I told you I was going to do it, though, didn't I? Did you? I don't remember you saying yeah. that. I told Terry. you I was going to do that for was, you. Was it recorded? Can we go back and listen to it? It is. It's pinned at the top of my uh, Twitter account. And we had a surprise guest. Mike Mattisau joined us, which was a nice, pleasant surprise. Mikey the Mouth. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I missed <laughs> fun. Didn't, I missed, didn't he promise uh, a Friday interview, Sherry? I think I came into that space for a little bit. Did he, um, did he follow up with that promise? I have, come on? I have uh, messaged him. I've not heard from him, but from my experience of DMing him in the past, it usually takes a couple of days for him to get back to you. So I think I'll probably give him until maybe tomorrow night or Wednesday morning to get back with me before. And then if not, then I'll just start looking for another guest. I'm available. Okay. I'll keep that at the top of my notebook. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much joking. I do not want to be true. <laughs> Poker legend. Hexovian. The, the two five mix bluff. game uh, uh, officiato from UK. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> there's not much content there, I'm afraid, Don. Uh, Sherry. I called your bluff, though, didn't I? Yeah, you did, and it scared me. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to have Slay on, but first he's got to actually listen to my show, so to speak, my space. Yeah, I would have listened, Sherry, but I was playing in a tournament, so I was trying to concentrate. I'm glad you were, because that is certainly before my show every time. Uh, and how'd you wow, do in that Kosher tournament? Matty S and Matty S just showed up at the same exact time. What are the odds? That's suspect. <laughs> Jeff, what, uh, how'd you do in that tournament, buddy? I didn't qualify. It was a. It's the quantum tournament at the bike casino, so they're running it all week. Um, it's a good guarantee. I mean, it's a $2 million guarantee, but, uh, I haven't qualified If you would have sent me $10, you might've qualified, but here we are, you know? Uh Oh, (laughs) here comes the Alec, (laughs) the Alec anti-sweat. Yep. I put a curse on you, bro. All right. I went to the synagogue. I prayed. I prayed for you to lose. I went to synagogue and pray. (laughs) Slay, um, did you get the information so I could donate to that charity of Alex Choice, please, so I could start running good? No, but if you send me $18, I'll get it to him. All right, send the, send the payment info. Nah, whatever, dude. Ask Alex. Last time it was a real fucking pain in the ass getting him that money. How you doing, Matthew? Yo, is this weird, guys? I slept for 14 hours yesterday, so you'd think I'd be, like, refreshed, and then I just slept again for, like, another couple of hours before I go to work. Like, is this normal to any of you guys? Were you oversleep, or am I my body slowly shutting down? 14 uh, hours. I haven't slept that long in ages. Me either. Sounds amazing. That's what my girlfriend just said. She thinks, like, I'm on drugs right now. So how could I sleep for, I'm not joking, for 14 hours yesterday, and then I just napped for four hours, four hours she just said. 
And yeah. I could have just slept longer. You needed it, obviously. Yeah, this is a bit strange, though. You overslept, Matty. If you oversleep too long, it, you fuck the bag, happened. Matty. That's what I woke up. I felt like weird, Hex. Like, I felt like I didn't feel normal after sleeping that long. Like, my brain was What's just the meaning of the of the pirate are you okay why wouldn't barry be okay well i was i read uh karen's tweets this morning that he's under attack and so i'm just checking on <laughs> under him. attack want... yeah i mean omar's got to choose a new target every week you know oh i know i was at target for like five weeks you remember well, hang about. Omar was named in those tweets, right? So he's got a right to reply there. Yeah, Omar was just responding to some Barry aggression. I think it's a fair fight, you know? Well, Not blaming I... anybody, you know? But, you know, Omar, he tends to be in the mix a little. That's all, you know? We're not going to lie. We're not going to lie. We're not going to slay. We're not going to pretend that Omar, you know, he gets into a little situations here and there, you know? You're not going to fucking pretend he doesn't, you know? Well, I'm yeah. just checking on Barry. I consider him a an acquaintance, and just checking on him. Oh uh, yeah, we all I'm love not, Barry. I'm gonna just we all tell you, love Barry. I've not been in the space as much the last few days as everybody knows. I've been taking care of a baby shower, so I'm just checking on him. Barry's a big boy; he can handle it. I don't know all the details. Barry but... can handle all the hatchets. That's how oh. he's. That's how he was raised. Well. I don't say he can. I don't say he can't. I'm just checking on him. Yeah, but after a bit, hatchets get a bit too much and it starts getting you down. It's boring, too. Let's face it. I didn't catch a lot what was going on the last few days with it. I heard SW and Omar and HBK went at each other crazy and a whole bunch of other nonsense the last few days. What did HBK do? HBK, everyone keeps saying HBK did something. I didn't hear any of that. I didn't catch any of it, so like I can't give an opinion on it. It's like I literally know absolutely nothing what was going HBK's on. I just know a good man. Got hot. HBK's a good man. It's just disappointing. Like all of them deserve like fun and happiness, and so I don't like that they're arguing with each other. It, it just is. Yeah, uh, I can't. Everyone just be friends. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't like each other, just stay clear of each other. It's okay. Right. Yeah. yeah that, exactly, that's not, Sherry. That's not, that's not been happening, though. That's steering clear. The peace talks break down. Someone says something to someone through a DM back channel bullshit. And the thing gets reign is reignition again. I mean, how long have we been at this bullshit now? It's insane. Well, I've said back channels is going to cause a lot of people a lot That's of problems. Exactly what we've been and saying we're for months. Stay out of the back channels. It does no good for nobody. I think too much water's under the bridge now. I really do. Yeah, it's a shame, really. Really a shame. So that's basically what it was, guys. It's just people talking shit in the back channels and then them coming and yelling at each other when well, basically neither one of them had like that. a valid it argument. It was about the whole M situation. Everyone just okay. can't leave. That you makes know, more everyone's sense. Everyone's flipping out about M every other day. It's like, it's time to move on with your lives. I don't particularly like M, but I just don't mention him. Or yeah, feel, I, mean, I don't think do he's interesting enough every... to keep getting mentioned the way. Yeah, why does he have to get brought up every day? That I won't disagree with you on, Slay. Well, but you also have to remember that he puts people's names in his mouth. So there's two sides of that. Well, yeah, well, I'm not every sticking other, up for him, Every, Sherry, every other me. second, someone's <laughs> talking about him. I kind of see where he's coming from at this point. These guys are fucking, you know. I mean, for instance, I was sticking up for him one day, and the next thing I knew, an hour later, I was blocked. I was like, wait a minute. I was what? just sticking up You for got the blocked? Guy. Jeez, Louise. Jeez, I was like, Louise. I was, just blo I was just blocked. I was just sticking up for him like an hour ago, and now I'm blocked. Like, Holy whatever, mackerel. Dude. Holy <laughs> mackerel. But believe I'm going to have to have a talk with I'm gonna have a little talk with the chairman about that one. You can't be blocked. Yeah, that, that, that was uh, that was the that was the mass blocking event. No one should take that personal. Come on, but Sherry, 
<laughs> Dude, I got I got blocked to the same block, time. It was, it, was, it was it was a mass blocking uh, because a, a tense situation arose. He wanted to step back, so he, he did the big blanket block. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't, I don't know. It's, it wasn't tough, dude. I got yeah, no, sometimes you got to block everyone. I respect it. I block yeah, a lot so of people. It wasn't, I block thousands saying is, of people. It's not targeted. Nothing I enjoy more than blocking a motherfucker. Goes for any of you fucks down there in the goo. I'd be happy to block your ass. Yeah, you got Keep an itchy trigger Keep finger on there. Keep fucking talking over there, you fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Slay is born of war today. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not in the mood. Not in the fucking mood. The, the two of you should exchange profile pictures, I think. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> oh, too funny. I'm allowed this profile picture. I served. I can have soldiers in my picture. Oh, yeah, no there's doubt. The, there's I'm no stolen valor. This morning. Yeah, there's no stolen valor over here. Oh, it's too funny. I did my time. The trenches. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, bring Larry <laughs> up. Bring fucking Larry up. You want to <laughs> no, see someone no. get fucking blocked? No. You never don't seen give him any life you, advice, Larry, so or tell him to move to Florida. Never mind. Sorry. I'll block never you mind. So fast, it'll make you never mind. Head never head, mind. Larry. I'll shut up. <laughs> don't never give mind. him any <laughs> constrictive <laughs> criticism, Larry. I love Larry Slay, but I've learned my lesson. Yeah, keep it fucking zipped over there. Fucking A. You fucking <laughs> troublemakers. <laughs> troublemakers everywhere, these fucking guys. Oh, they're coming for you. Hey, Larry, you, you might want to... Fucking concern drop, trolling me. You, you might want to get the guys to drop that bit about you being the head of the ERC fucking uh, scalp takers. I told Player last night he's got to stop because he knows yeah. exactly what he's doing. And I'm like, okay, you know, the first time was one thing, but now you said it like three times. So <laughs> you got to stop because it, my head will be on a spike if I can fight tomorrow. Yeah, it's funny, but it's, uh, yeah, it needs to, it needs to drop that one. He laughed and goes, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, I know I'm right. You know exactly what you're doing, too. Gives you that gruffy, dark, dark, deep laugh, which makes it even funnier. <laughs> I'm just going to say this preemptively, Hextopian. Any DM I've sent anyone can be posted publicly. I don't care. So I have nothing to hide. So just well, to, let, let just me to say get in front of all this. <laughs> yeah, let, let me say publicly, my DMs are Fort Knox. I don't care what happens to me or anyone else. They're not getting leaked. Ever. I, I assume... Except for a handful of people, but other than that, I would assume anything written in DM is going to end up public. I would just assume that. Yeah, I, I assume that. I just I'm not going to do that. I don't I don't agree with it, but I can see why people do it. I mean, well, I, I don't understand it. I think it's a private conversation between two people. We should stay private. But my position is they will always be private. Yeah, the point of all that is I got none to hide, fully transparent. Uh, not sure running you any, don't. Yeah, okay. Not Larry. running any organization. You know what not... someone who had something to hide would say? Yeah, that's what I thought. Exactly. For instance, Larry, I'll, I'll never mention the DM where you put a hit out on Slay and a bounty on his head. That will never be leaked. You can trust me on that one. Anything else? Donna over there, there huh? quiet as a church mouse. What are you up to? <laughs> Anything I say in a DM, I'll say it to a set of fucking people in spaces. That's right. Amen, sister. And you know, the only um, DMs Donna and I probably wouldn't share besides, you know, private conversations. A, I would defend myself, you know, if I had to with DMs. But uh, her and I will never share the dick pics that we've been judging. We will never Thank share God. those DMs. Thank you, Sherry. I appreciate that. You're welcome. It wasn't my finest hour. <laughs> it's all Slay's fault. My beer is six out and ten hex. Oh, that's generous. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. At least a three potato. <laughs> that's one of my three wishes, Sherry, from the genie. <laughs> oh, I love it.
Manny S, are you playing today, bud? Manny S is a pussy. <laughs> yeah, I'm rolling some joints right now to go. I'm just fucking lazy. I got to take a shower, too. But I should be going. But it's taking me a little bit longer to get there. Uh, you know what? I stopped smoking weed, and I feel like I've been playing better. I don't know if it's correlated. It's one hundred percent true, Slay. Smoking I honestly, weed. Honestly, I, I was I was hating on fucking people that don't smoke weed because they're pussies, but it's actually been helping. I think. Ronnie Bardo like, said that in an interview, and just like you, the first two minutes of the interview, I got like kind of annoyed with him, and I was like, "Fuck, Ronnie." But then I actually listened to it with an open mind for 10 minutes. And I was like, wow, everything he just said is 100% correct. It tightens you saying, up and it dulls your sentences, bro. 100%. I'm not saying I'll never smoke weed again, but I don't know. I don't really miss it that much. No, I just need it for my ride home. God forbid. You know what I'm saying? You guys know that um, I'm not the strongest mentally. So God forbid I have a bad day. I need to roll something to soothe this, you know, soothe me over after my session. Yeah, I hear you. Well, today's going to be a good day. You're not going to need that on the way home. Nah, I'll be all right. It'll, it's a blessed day regardless, like I said. I can't really there complain about shit. Drive into a glass spirit. guitar to go play a card game. Life That's is pretty good. Pretty lucky. Look at you, new fucking man. Told you, Slay. No more complaining about one two. I'm about to embrace the one two's great. One two's great. Have a beautiful you can play day. With fucking idiots all day and make money. What what could what could what could be bad about that? It's a good day. What are you guys up to today? Anything? Well, is it warm out where you guys are yet, or is it still cold by you guys? It's cold today. Mean you guys, be- we live all over the place. No one lives in the same place. Well, no, because Sherry lives where it's like moderately warm too. So. Sherry lives in Georgia. I'm sure it's warmer there. Yeah, but you know what? I'm in Spokane, Washington right now, and it's been snowing last week, but today is supposed to be 70, so I'm happy to report that. You had snow, snow, Sherry? Well, yeah, last Tuesday in Spokane, oh, we had a snowing. Yeah. She's up north. The Pacific Northwest. Yeah. It's fucking hot down here, man. It's back to no more winter time. I love the winter time down here. Now it's back to fucking swamp like humidity. It was beautiful the last two days, and we went on a boat ride yesterday, and it's supposed to be 70 today. And I'm sure next week we'll have a blizzard, but it's okay. I'll take it. I was going to go play poker today, but I'm too tired. We've been entertaining out of town guests the last five days. Today is just a do nothing day. Don't even give me PTSD thinking of that, Sherry. That same fucking uncle that came here, he flew in today to like go back to his job down here. He better fucking skip my call. <laughs> and Maddie's like, I've had enough. It's funny you said that because um, when two of our guests went back to the hotel last night we you know closed the door behind them and we were like thank you jesus yo after a while that's what i'm saying it's like you need alone time and sherry like my house i don't have a house like so to entertain people there's nowhere to hide like where i live it's literally just a living room a kitchen and two bedrooms to the side of the living room like you know what i'm saying like it was just way too much and like these people stayed for three fucking weeks like it was a lot time it's a long time and uh, these folks, they left this morning, but, you know, they've been here since last Wednesday and they've never been here before. So they, you know, wanted to go do something every day. And, you know, I have this big shower Saturday, so I'm trying to get food, the cake and, you know, all the stuff going and we're running around trying to entertain them and take them for dinner and take them, you know, sightseeing and blah, blah, blah. So, Yeah. Last night when the doors closed behind them, we were like, praise God, they're gone. And I love them. They've been friends of ours for 30 years. But, you know, it just we're tired. We're just tired. I think it bothered me the most that, like, I didn't catch my family when they came to stay saying thank you. Like, if I stay at someone's house and shit, like, I'm just mad respectful or I try to be. I'm definitely not the easiest person to get along with. You guys all know that. So I'm not sitting here acting like I'm a perfect guest by any means. I'm definitely not. But, like, 
Yo, my uncle didn't say thank you and shit like once. Like when he left, he didn't say thank you and then reached out like six days later to say it only because I felt like he was coming back. You know what I'm saying? And he wanted to see my right. parents. But like there was just like a lot about this shit. Sorry to complain and have like family therapy hour with me. But like that's just okay. a lot of this shit rubbed me the wrong way. I'm not going <laughs> to well, lie. Well, that's part of why we like locked the door behind them because <laughs> the whole time we did, they complained about everything. Like they, on the day the shower took place, the men got to go to like a golfing simulator for a few hours. And he complained that the the simulator was delayed or not registering the numbers correctly or whatever. I mean, they literally complained about my daughter's back gate wasn't locked. That the vent of the dryer. Yo, you see, you house. know exactly what I'm talking <laughs> about. That's crazy. This out. is this is some type of shit, Sherry. I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about. Yo, if we brought up Florida, anything that got brought up with Florida, he'd be like, it's a shithole. And that I agree with. But it's like everything was a comparison from Florida to Texas, because he lives in Texas now. Any single thing you brought up was almost like a comparison or a competition to this person. And I'm just like and- I'm like, what the fuck, dude? You, like, I haven't seen you in X amount of years. Laugh. Like, like I don't understand why this is all, like, a fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just say thank you. And then, like, you said they were complaining about my dog snoring. <laughs> I'm like, the fucking dog lives here. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, just get rid of him because he snores? Like, yeah, let me just get rid of him to accommodate you. No problem. I'll just throw him outside and let the coyotes eat him. Now, no let biggie. me tell you, the lady of the couple, and I love them. They're dear friends. I, I'm, I'm joking about it, but I'm not mad at them. You know what I mean? Like, we're just joked about it. But she's only about 5'10", maybe. And we were going to take my daughter's Bronco to go to the lake yesterday for the boat ride. And she was trying to climb in the back seat and her husband was hi- behind her, like trying to push her in. And I was like, Oh no, 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 We can't take this vehicle. Like, cause all I can envision was her falling out of it when she was trying to get out. Cause she has fallen the last couple of years, a couple of times. And she actually fell off my daughter's deck the Friday night and didn't tell anybody. So I'm like, so we get in the other car to go to, for the rock to the lake. And she says to my daughter, you really need to install a running board on your Bronco. And my daughter's like, okay, you know, just blowing it off. And um, then she says, yeah, you're about to have a baby. You really have to have a running board on that Bronco. And I wanted to laugh and just yell out, what, is the baby going to, like, crawl up the running board to climb into their baby seat themselves? Like, why does she need a running board? Because she's pregnant and about to have a baby. Like, it doesn't make even sense, some of the stuff that they were saying. That's, like, the shit that my aunt would say, (laughs) like, my husband's wife. That sounds, like, identical, like, the same type of criticisms, comments, like, shit like that, that she would say. And, like, yo, you can't say it doesn't wear on you after a while sherry because it does no, it's like it you're was, like me yeah. where you can handle one or two comments possibly three on a nice sunny summer day but like when it starts to be comment four five six it just becomes passive aggressive digs at that point and well, that's and when it's it like it's hard for kid, me you know for my kids my kids were getting definitely getting aggravated and of course my daughter's pregnant so she was taking it to heart and I was like don't get upset you know she started to cry on Saturday morning I was like don't let it bother you they always complain it has nothing to do with you you're not like you're being a great host you know because they really were complaining about the dinner where they had dinner Friday night and my daughter loves that restaurant and so she really was taking it personal and I was like dude they complain about everything. They've complained to, about things like in your backyard the last two days. So why are you letting this upset you? And she was crying, I don't know. And I was like, just fucking blow it off. It's not a big deal. Like, who cares? What annoyed me the most, though, Sherry, I'll be honest, is my uncle knew I wasn't working. He knows I'm dusty. Like I told you, I don't lie about my, my right. finances with anyone. And I told you the whole dinner situation or no, when I took him to dinner, Yep. like, come on, Sherry, like, come the fuck on. Like, you can't justify that. Like I probably spent 20 or 30 spends over a hundred. Like, like that's a little wild, yo, in my, in my opinion. 
it's not right. And quite honestly, he should be helping you. Like my me. mom was like blown away by that shit too. My mom, my mom usually doesn't say a word about shit. She's the opposite of me. Even she was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, and that's when I was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? I learned my lesson. He asked me to go out to eat every night after that. I was just like, nope, I'm busy. And I wasn't busy. I was sitting here twiddling my ass with fucking smoking pot. So it was like a, you know, like kind of like a, a dig How in his face. Twiddle your ass. <laughs> Why are you, you curious? Are you curious? Like, yeah, let's see it. I don't know actually how that would work. I'm going to have to think on that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. But, you know, they're dear friends and you just, I can blow it off because I've just known them so long. They were a little bit over the top this time. Um, But again, we've never spent like five days in a row with them before, six days in a row. So after three days, my opinion, Sherry, is it's three days is usually the max. If you're spending like all day together, if you're like on a family vacation and you're only spending like small amounts of time with each person, stuff is different. But when you're spending all day, every day with someone, five days is a long time. It was. I mean, it was. And my kids were like, holy smokes. I was like, y'all just let it roll off they're just an older couple they're both retired from very busy corporate lives and they're bored like that's the only thing they could have to talk about is what they see around them right and pass judgment and it's not right but it just is what it is so you just gotta blow it off yeah yeah i showed you a plot to get rid of me after a week weren't you love Oh my god! Only because I was exhausted. <laughs> yeah, you guys actually did a ton of shit, though, Donna. You guys had like a full yes. itinerary every single day. I mean, we never went to bed before what? Probably two a.m. was the earliest we went to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time it was four a.m., four thirty. Yeah. Holy smokes! <laughs> and that was Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a fun time. Larry, are you playing today? Uh it, no, tonight. I'll play tonight probably. Not today. I've got uh work stuff, adulting to do. I hear you. I uh, hear you. Well, good luck later on. I just invited Brad up. Maybe he can tell us what he's got coming up here. What he's doing in the Twitch world. I'm sure there's things going on and whether, I don't know, he may be busy. But anyway, I sent him a request. Always fun to have an update from Brad. Slay, what are you playing today? Tournaments. Is tournaments. Good luck, my love. Get fucking shit on. Donna, you want to tell us about playing yesterday? Oh, yeah, I played heads up yesterday against George. And I've not played heads up for oh, God knows how long. I can't remember hands, but like we we played for about half an hour, 40 minutes. I lost, but it was so much fun. He said I was a very tough opponent, (laughs) but I just kept on fucking raising and re-raising and shit like that. I just got bored. And when I'm bored, like, (laughs) it's like, fuck you. I'm just going to fucking raise it and re-raise it and shit like that. I was just doing all kinds of stupid shit. But, like, I really enjoyed it. It Good good for you. Good for you. And when are you leaving for Malta? Uh, 23rd, I think, of April. Well, that's coming up here not too long. A little more than a month. I know. I ain't even thinking about it. (laughs) I'm going to have a countdown since you did that (laughs) shit to me. I'm going to have a countdown. You can count down as much as you want. It don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be packing. I'll be packing last minute as always. Ah uh, no. I mean, I still haven't took my fucking suitcase out and car yet from uh, my last trip. 
I've took my little one out, but not my big one. So I've still got, I've still got my peach wine and me uh, peach jam in car. Oh, little yeah. Come on, son. Took me five suitcases to get here. <laughs> five. I've never traveled with five suitcases before, but it did because I had all that shower stuff. Yeah. Did you get did you get a lot to Nat to take? I'm sorry? Did you give a lot to Natalie to take? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Yep. Oh my gosh. Everybody loved the little uh, bunny rabbit uh, outfit. Which one? The tutu with the bunny ears. Oh, I think I have a video. I've got to go through all that stuff and get it posted. So cute. All right, Brad joined us. Give us an update. What's going on in Brad's life? Hey, hey what's up, everybody? How are y'all doing? Good. How are you? Hey, Brad. I'm trying to get motivated, Brad. <laughs> there we go. I like it. I like it. Uh, not a whole lot new. Um, I streamed yesterday. Um, it was fun. Had a lot of fun. Um, I, um, uh, don't really have anything like huge going on. Kids just had, um, spring break this last week. So it was kind of nice. Uh, you know, I uh, got to hang out with the kids, um, most of the days and, uh, it was fun. Uh, I had one of my boys that, uh, has a friend that lives about 30 miles away. He changed schools. And he had a sleepover over there, so, um, you know, that's just some of the family stuff going on. Uh, Are your boys I, in any spring sports? Um, so my uh, my youngest two uh, play soccer. Uh, the soccer season isn't going on right now, but they had an academy that was going on during that week, so that was kind of fun too for the kids. They uh, like a soccer skills and drills academy, so Very that was cool. cool. It was a couple hours each day. Uh, my my uh, my older son of the two, he was so devastated when it ended. Like he was actually in tears. Aww. He was like, "I want to go back." <laughs> the, what was cool was the last uh, practice or whatever. They always finished their practices with sc scrimmages, and it was in the rain. And uh, I thought that was cool. If I was a kid, 10, 11, 12 years old, I would fucking love to play in the rain. I remember yeah, when I was yeah. a kid. When I was a kid, I used to love that shit. I don't know. That's just me. Um, I'm going to tell one... you, when I coached baseball, Brad, and it was raining out, parents would, I would tell them at the beginning of the season, we practice during the rain. And they were like, how could you blah, blah, blah. I said, all we do is sliding practice. So bring extra clothes because you're going to want to change your child before they get in your vehicle. But we are going to have sliding practice in the mud puddles. So that be is, prepared. That is funny you say that. I remember uh, when, when I was in high school, I played baseball. Uh, when it rained, we did a drill called Charlie Hustles. Uh, you're familiar with baseball. Uh, yep. You probably know who Charlie Hustle is. Yep. Uh, but Pete Rose was known for, you know, just like these full, you know, three, four feet off the ground, parallel to the ground, just head first dives, dives. In, yep. into the base. So we would do those. We would, we know, when it was raining, we would just like run and jump and we'd slide for, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet. Get, we'd be muddy as shit by the end of it. Uh, but I remember those. It's funny you said that. When it was raining, we were we were doing Charlie Hustles. It All right. Fun. We didn't do Charlie Hustles because I had to keep my children safe. <laughs> but we did teach them feet first slides um, so that they mastered it in the mud puddles so they wouldn't hurt themselves. So when they For got sure. on the dirt, they knew how to do it correctly so they wouldn't yeah. jam themselves into the base either, right? Yeah, so, right. and let me tell you, the kids loved it yeah. and the parents hated it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I'm sure. I'm but sure. The second or third time we would do it, then the parents got on board because they just saw how much fun the kids, the kids just right. loved it. Like right. they were just being kids playing in the mud, you know, and they were 10 years old and loving every minute. And 
You know, right. it was awesome. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, not not too much. Uh, Are you going on the WPT? Uh, I wish. Yeah. I'm still like heartbroken. I had um, several opportunities. I play a lot on Club WPT, right. and they had a tournament. Uh, it was, uh, winner, it was basically a winner take all tournament. Um, they did give cash out to some like top, I don't know, 15 or something like that. Right. But, um, it, it wasn't even enough substantially. It was like a huge drop off. You're talking about like a six K package and then like a hundred bucks, you know, or something. Oh. So it wasn't like, uh, it, it was pretty much a winner take all, you know? Yeah. And, um, and we, uh, and and I fucking finished third and it was the, like the last Saturday before the last giveaway. And then I just had a couple more shots at it and just really bummed, really wanted to go on the group cruise. Um, right. yeah. Um, I was working with, uh, one of the WPT voyage reps. Uh, she wanted to have uh, a bunch of the no lenses uh, on the table or uh, giveaway like to a bunch of, of people. Uh, it didn't work out, but I thought that would have been a lot of fun. She wanted a bunch of red ones because they're going to have like a red a red night or something like that on right. the cruise. She, she wanted a bunch of red ones. She, we we're going to put the WPT Voyage logo on them. And Aww. I know I was bummed, but uh, that would have been fun. I know. I know it would have been cool. But she was like, well, maybe next year. Um, it was probably just, you know, I don't know. It just didn't work out. But uh, Hey, if it's meant to be, it will be. And if right, not, right. okay. Right, right. But, um, but yeah, I, 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 I really had a blast at the last uh, WPT win uh, event. Uh, I think the WPT does a really, really great job of, you know, providing a great experience. And, Hell yeah. You know, I'll definitely be back there next year. Um, I really wanted to go on the um, the cruise. Uh, the uh, I'll give you guys a little scoop here that just got released on my stream last night. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who Jeremy Clemens is. He's like the, for all intents and purposes, he's just the he's the VP of Club WPT. Um, but. Uh, they're going. They're going to start the satellites into uh, Montreal. They're, apparently, the WPT is going to Montreal. So, nice. so for the first time with Club WPT, they're going to send people uh, out of the country. Um, you know, on land, not on a voyage. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, that's so, great news. And yeah. tell us, tell us when and where your um. Where you stream? Tell us. About, I, you know, I know, but I want other yeah. people to learn. So tell us I about streaming. It. So I, I stream every uh, Sunday. Um, my streams are long. Um, I usually start uh, from like one p.m. Pacific. My streams usually go till eight or nine. Uh, I usually stream three tournaments that day, three or four tournaments that day. <clears throat> I stream um, Club WPT Poker on Twitch. Uh, I've been streaming for about a year and a half. Um, I have a lot of fun, man. You know, I, I try to tell people, like, if you come to my stream and, you, and you're thinking, like, I'm going to coach you and teach you on GTO, you're at the wrong stream. Um, I'm there to have fun. Uh, I don't just stream my table. I stream my community's table. They're often in the same tournaments. Um, and so I actually, like, get on the rail and, like, I'll pull their tables up. And I'm rooting for them just like I'm rooting for myself. Right on. Um, I I listen to music. Um, oftentimes, you'll catch me karaoke. <laughs> um, and uh, another thing I've been working on over the last like year or so is I bring DJs. I do collaborations with DJs into my streams. Um, and because of that, like uh, because I play lots of music and stuff, I can't record my stuff. I'll, I'll run into copyright issues. So, really, the only way you can catch my streams is live. Um, and but, I'm going to uh, tell you, I've been in a stream several times, and they're awesome. And it's really a lot of fun when he has the guest DJs playing the music in the background while he's streaming. I think it brings a great dimension to the stream. Now, tell us how to find your stream, Brad. Uh, on Twitch, it's uh, Brad underscore. Here, I'll, I'll tag you right here. 
Perfect. So actually, I think I have it in my my bio here. Pretty sure I have it in my bio. Yeah, it's in my bio. Um, I have the Twitch uh, TV Brad underscore Browlio eighty four uh, link. So if you click my name, it's in my bio there. Perfect. And I'm going to tell you, uh, some of you already know this, um, but when I was in Vegas, I was playing at the South Point uh, po Poker Room, and I had been playing for several hours Hi, with, Hi, Brad. With, with several uh, different folks. And once we you know, started talking, I realized that they were all of the, um, what do you guys call yourselves? Brad? The stream team family. The stream team family that Brad belongs to was playing in this tournament with me. And it was kind of fun that um, I ran into all of his buddies. So, hey, Norbert, how are you? Okay, I'm fine. You? I'm well, thank you. But yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Uh, and a bunch of you guys made the final table too. So that was even, that was even cooler. Like, uh, uh, meta John, who you met, he won yeah. a package. He won a package on the voyage. So he'll be on the voyage. Um, he, um, uh, just, that dude's just like, uh, he's like a brother to me from this community. He's awesome, dude. Uh, he was going to come awesome. to the meetup game, but it just didn't work out. Yeah, the, several of them were gonna, but they had tournaments, so it was all based on when they were playing or they were off. Yeah. And you know, like several other people, like Karen couldn't come because she was still playing. And you know, there were several that you know regrettably couldn't get to the meetup game. But right. um, it was certainly fun, not only meeting you in person, but meeting all of your friends in person. A uh, good yeah, group cool. of people. Oh, no doubt. I mean, honestly, that was another thing that for me, like when I went out to Vegas, like apart from all the WPT and tournament stuff, I got to meet more of the club WPT community that I hadn't met before. I got to hang out with some of them I had before and then tons of people in the spaces community. I got to meet you and Donna and um, uh, Rizzo and uh, Cody, Brian, you Brian you Snoop. HBK, yeah. Snoop. Um, God, I know I'm missing some. Like Nick, just a, 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 a Joe Nick? Marengo. Did you meet Nick? Nick. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, yep, I saw. Yep, I met Nick Bertucci. Um, PPE. PPE. Um, who else? Carolyn Wayne was at my table. Yeah. And how about um, Cody? Wasn't Cody? Cody. Table? Yep. Cody. Bobby Schmidt. Um, it was super dope. It was, I, it was cool to like meet everybody and, that was you know, awesome. I thought it was really awesome. I, uh, I was spent that day, uh, that, um, the meetup game. I was so exhausted. My buddy that I brought, he's also part of the stream team fam. He had heard about the meetup game through Meta John and myself <laughs> and him and I were just basically up all night and, um, and, uh, I was just so exhausted, so exhausted, but I had, I had a lot of fun. It was really, really awesome of Sean McCormick to give us a little uh, tour of the Poker Go yes. studio. That was absolutely special. It was such a great day. It really was such a great day. And we not only met some great people, but we just had a blast. See you later, guys. Bye. I know, but... It was just fun. Just a fun time. I want to get Barry in here. Barry, my space started out with Pirate212. Are you okay? You doing okay, bud? Yeah, I'm good. I'm not going to let these low-life scumbags get to me. <laughs> All right. I'm just checking on you, bud, because, you know, we go way back in these spaces and you've always been a champion of women and you know, I don't want that to ever be lost in the stupidity. Yeah, I wanted to just yeah, I wanted to come up. I wanted to say good looking out. You know, I agree with your sentiment. You know, even though yes, I did play the recording, but for them to try and weaponize you against me, you know, they want a white knight. Now uh, they have nothing to say about the guy who made the comments. They have nothing to say about the people that are are defending it, defending him, but I'm the fucking villain now. All right, I'll be the villain now. I'm just gonna go out, 
call out the hypocrisy, call them all fucking scumbags, the Omars, the Edens. They can all go fuck themselves. And, hey, listen, he showed his true colors many, many times. So I have to really rag on the fucking guy. The guys, when they tell you who they are, believe them. So he can also go fuck himself. I ain't worried about fumbling a bag. I don't have to fucking shield what I say. I'm an open book. My name is on my fucking profile. Come and fucking get me. Come to Coney Island. You know where I fucking live. My address is out there. Go and fuck yourself. Good thing this is a recording sp- recorded space so they can play this back over and over and over again. Eden is a fucking low life. Omar's a scumbag piece of shit. M could go and fuck himself. Anybody else on that list? I mean, HBK. He, I, li- I like him. He tries to make this all WWE. Have a good fucking time with it. Stirs the pot a little too much, but it's all blow up in his fuck- fucking face. Guy swore off fucking Twitter spaces he was on this morning. So, well, I'm going to tell you, I didn't realize they were trying to pit me against you. I didn't hear that part of the story. But, um, you know, um, I totally understand why you played that recording because of the, you know, I just get it. And, uh, you know, I was not mad about it. I told you how I felt about it. And, you know, I, you know where I come from. So, well, I, absolutely. I, and I didn't say pit you against me. I said weaponize you against me. Yeah. Because now they get to use that ammunition. Well, doesn't Barry have a daughter? This is someone's daughter that they're talking about. Yeah, listen. Go ahead. Sorry, sir. No, it's okay. I, I just, you know, I understand the whole realm of everything, you know. Um, and uh, I wanted you to know how I felt about it because I was hoping you would not just use it in a replay mode. Um, and I appreciate you, and you know I do. No, and I appreciate you looking out, and, you know, the internet forever. So the things that they do and say can't be undone. It's, it's going to be around to haunt them for quite some time now. The bad thing is they just, most of them nameless, faceless trolls on the internet. Sorry, Larry. But there's nothing, uh, you know, there's not going to be any repercussions that are going to come. It's just going to be more chatter for another few days. They had their space last night. They dragged me for an hour and a half, which is fine. Maybe thinking I'm senile, but I'm here. And I'm standing ten toes. And they can go fuck themselves. I hear you. Well, I appreciate you. And, you know, it's okay for people to have differences of opinions. It's not okay for everybody to attack and this and that. And, you know, life is short and we can do better. And why can't we get along and just have fun in the spaces? Like, it doesn't have to be mean and ugly, people. It really doesn't. Well, the thing is, Barry's an OG in this poker industry. They they want what Barry's got. They will never have that. Never in a month of Sundays. I'm still waiting for Barry to write a fucking book because I'd be interested in reading it. 100% I would. I mean, I Barry's got a still- lot of stuff. I'm sorry, Don. My offer still stands on that, Barry. So you just reach out when you're ready. Barry's standing in this poker community is amazing. Oh. The amount of people that he knows, the amount of OGs that he knows is is unreal. The stories that he can tell. These these new kids that's come in spaces and they think, oh well, I can do this and like really, really chase it. You don't chase it. People come to you. If they want you, people will come to you like I've been headhunted. And I've been in poker industry what ten years? And I've never gone out and looked for anything. People give me things. Because they want to give them money. I've never asked for anything. And that's because of my reputation. I've got a good reputation in poker industry. Fuck knows why. Because <laughs> I can be a cowbag at times. And I admit that. But my reputation is good. 
Barry, I only caught the last like five seconds of that, but I pretty much think you're uncancelable. However you say that word at this point, whatever they were spewing at you last night, I wasn't in that space. Yeah, they even said, oh, Barry, the old man, he's untouchable. That's right, I'm untouchable, motherfucker. Come get some. There's a reason why everyone likes you. I hate to say it. Or for the most part, everyone likes you. I won't say everyone likes you. We'll say 97 out of 100. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's not coincidental, in my opinion. Maddie, you're so funny. They're 97 out of 100. <laughs> you always got those Love wild cards Harry. out there. We love everybody until you make it where we can't love you. And then yeah, we have to just tolerate you. Exactly. I'm a share of critics and, you know, sometimes well-deserved. But they, they just, you know, this is, I keep saying, you got to look at them, you know, where, where see where it's coming from. The same reason, like I said, they brought up the Posco interview was to drag Veronica to get back at Nick because they were mad at Nick. The same reason. They, they're they mad at Snoop now, so they want to start say, questioning my fucking home game. You know, let's talk, you know, the just the snide comments they want to fucking make. It's because they're mad because Snoop didn't get canceled because he did a degenerate fucking low life thing. Big fucking deal. He paid back the fucking money. Nobody's going to trust him for a long fucking time now. He's going to he's gonna have to live with that. That's punishment enough. You know, if Nomadic wanted to push the fucking button, I'm sure he'd get 150 fucking people in there. But he's choosing not to. You can't be fucking canceled. These are fucking scumbags. If, if people could be canceled, Eden would have got canceled last year just for the way he his fucking horrendous fucking be behavior. How he was. When you said that the other day, Barry, I, I really thought and stewed on it for a minute. But I do think you're correct. So I do think if Nomadic came back right now and, like you said, and pressed the button, there would be 50 people in the room. Do I know what would be said to him? Absolutely not. But I completely agree with that point. It's crazy. He'd get 150. It would be packed. Half the people would want to curse him. Half the people would say, welcome back. It would just be It would be a, another circus sideshow that people love to tune into. You're not lying. You are not lying on that point, but it'll be 149 because I won't be in there with that fucking asshole. But there you go. No, I've been taking your guys' advices and taking breaks from spaces, too. I just come in. Like I said, I came in the morning, Sherry. We had a dope-ass space. Barry and Player were sleeping, but it was like a good low-key space. Nice. I just hit and run my spaces now. Nice. It makes a difference. It, it really does because... What good is going to come out of the yelling, the nastiness? No good. It's no good. It's not a positive. It's all negative. There's no positive there. Nothing out of that's coming positive. And we can do better. And we can have great spaces without the nastiness. And I believe that. I believe everyone involved can do that and have a great space. And, and it'd be great without the nastiness. Um because they're great people in spaces. I say that about everybody. I may not like you, but that doesn't mean I don't think you're great. As a, you know, at what you do, you know, and guess what? It's okay. You know, people don't like my voice, so they don't come in. Fine. I don't care. That's your opinion. I don't need to know it. It's none of my business. <laughs> We're good. Yeah, I had to unplug a little bit myself for a little while. Not even just from spaces, but honestly, even a little bit from poker. Coming out of, I mentioned this, I think, in the last time I came up. Uh, I think it was Barry's space I was ho he was hosting. But coming out of December, like, I was just exhausted, like, spent. I needed to just completely unplug a little bit. I wasn't really on social media at all. I stopped streaming for a couple of weeks just to spend some time i was away from the family so wanted to spend some time with the family and just uh i mean space is like a, you know i'm sporadic i try to come in when i can um you know my schedule has changed a little bit in the last you know four months or so so uh but nonetheless you know it it's kind of like sometimes i come into the spaces and i'm like it's just like this this space versus that space and i don't want to like 
be in there for for the space wars you know like i i like enjoy listening to barry and everybody that's here you know doing their spaces and just having fun and joking around or talking about poker but when it comes into like uh space wars i, I don't really enjoy that at all um and i you know um you know i even notice sometimes people will be like Oh, he's over there in that space. So I, I feel weird. Like, should I be in this person's space? I don't want to offend somebody else by being in this space. And so I'll try to go to both spaces. And I'm like, I, it's just kind of, you know, um, I don't know. But I, I, I still enjoy listening. Um, I try to come in when I can. And, you know. Well, and there is absolutely no reason for anyone to say, if you go to their space, you can't. You're, I'm unfollowing you, or you, I'm going to block you if you're friends with that person. Or that shit drives me the craziest, Sherry. That's it's like so my biggest ridiculous. fucking pet peeve on here when people say that to me. Well, and it's so ridiculous that people actually will fall into line. And I'm like, how old are you people? Like, are you this person's puppet now? Like, what is wrong with you as a person that you think it's okay that another adult is telling you not to be friends with someone or not to follow someone or whatever? I mean, that you better look inside yourself if you fall in line with those requests or demands. Like, yeah, last night. He, sorry, last no, night. No, 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 took, go ahead, Barry. Yeah, last night he took pleasure in saying that to his, uh, whatever, 150 people, whatever, 120 people he had. Don't go into their space. Don't give them any content. You know, he takes pleasure in that. Sorry, Brett. No, no. Uh, no I, you know, for me, like, I, I, you guys have, like, you know, kind of known me for, from the beginning of these spaces, you know, really started kicking off. Like, I genuinely root for everybody. Like, when people are in bad spots, I, I root for them to get out of them. And uh, when people are doing wrong, I'm still rooting for them to get right and hopefully – you know, and, you know, I don't, I I have a hard time, like, putting people on my shit list, because I don't really have one, you know, I pretty much like everybody, I'm pretty much rooting for everybody, um, and I don't, it's just, like I said, when I get into those space war situations, I feel like I don't want to piss somebody off, because I'm over here listening, but, you know, I don't know, I don't know, but I, I just, uh, I do pull for everybody, um, you know, Genuinely, I really do. The thing that gets me, though, is people going to one space and then come into another space and start shit staring. And that's what I don't like. If they'd stop doing that, then I'd be fine. That they is don't. a big problem, that they'll be in one space and they run over and report back to the other space. And no good is ever going to come out of that. No good whatsoever. And it's unfortunate that, you know, some people do that with malice, like they do it because they're getting off on it. And it, you know, it's not good because it's causing an issue. You know what? If they're talking about someone in that other space, so be it. You know, so be it. If you want to text that person and say, hey, they're chatting about you, you know, that's fine. That's your business if you want to do it. The problem is, is when you tr and when somebody is quoting what's being quoted in that space and they're not quoting it correctly they're reading into it and so then it's stirring the pot right so it, you know if you want to be that reporter then just say hey they're talking about you sherry in that space don't be like hey sherry this is what's being said in that space and there's a difference because that Chinese telephone, for lack of better description, is what is causing a lot of problems in spaces that are so unnecessary. And like, we're better than that. We are so better than that. Yeah, like yeah and I'm sorry to bring this up, but Omar's in uh, OMC space a lot. And he reports back. So where where they're getting the content from? I'm not dragging Omar at all. So Omar, if you're listening on a burner or whatever, I'm not dragging you. I'm just saying. Well, there's a whole litany. I mean, you can think about all the 
the quote unquote hit hitters or hit men or whatever. You know, what? you could say that about, you know, yeah. The guy with the sunflower that's Maddie S's best friend. I mean, you know, he was reporting back and forth and mm -hmm. you know, you could say that about a lot of people. Yeah. And I and also think that some of those people have finally realized that, hmm, maybe that's not the best thing to be doing because it really is, it's stirring up the pot and now the pot is boiling over where people are so mad and angry at each other. Like, and when you have to look at, you know, how did we get to this point? You have to realize that uh, stirring the pot in the back channels and maybe not quoting someone exactly properly or correctly is part of the problem. Yeah, well, it has seemed to have uh, dropped off. So take that as you will. What happened to Charlie Carroll? Is he not a sponsor anymore? What happened to him? I was thinking about that other day. He hasn't been on a space in a while. I hope he's okay. Yeah. He's had his hair cut. He's cut his long locks. Oh, I might have to look that up. Yeah, he's had his hair cut. I hope he's got his hair done. <laughs> yeah, we're thinking about Charlie the other day. I'm thinking, is he still sponsoring Eden or not? Mm. So I've not heard anything about it, but. Yeah, he hasn't been in a while. Who, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen him in a space, yeah, I was going to say, in a while, long time. Yeah, and he used to drop in every once in a while. He might be in the burner, though. That's why I told you. This anonymous section changed the game for people. I always tell Barry about this, too. So many people are lurking right now, Sherry. And you know what? It doesn't even, I don't care. Like, I don't care. And I yeah, think me neither. if somebody like Charlie wants to be in there anonymously or on a burner, I think that, you know, not only is this right, but sometimes, you know, Barry can tell you, I'll be in the, in the uh, anonymous and I'll be texting him, <laughs> telling him I'm there. And it's just because so many times when I come into a space, sometimes I'm working and I'm trying to do something, and I just want to listen, and then all I hear is, Sherry, can you come up and tell us? Or, Sherry, do you know if? And, you know, then I come up and speak, and I'm not getting my shit done. <laughs> or I just want to take a nap and doze off listening, you know? And so I'll sit down in the anonymous, but I guarantee you I'm texting people the whole time I'm there until I doze off or whatever. I remember Jennifer Tilly, too, Sherry. She said that she's always in the anonymous section. And if that's what's going to take to get her there and she doesn't want to show her face, I'm completely cool with that. Like I said, because it's another listener and it keeps growing. You know what I'm saying? It keeps growing the channel. I could care less right. about that. Right. But it really does bother some people. And I'm always like, why? Why does it bother you that they're anonymous? You know, you always, since day one, I've always said, Always assume somebody is recording the space, even if the host That's is. That's what it is. I was just going to DM you something, but you just hit the nail on the head. That's really what it is. Where always, people feel like people gather information, but you yeah. always have to assume that whatever you say on here is going to be either repeated or recorded. And I have said that since day one, when people used to say, come in a space and say, oh, this space isn't being recorded so I can s speak freely. And I would always say, no, you always have to assume somebody is recording the space. Somebody's, if not recording the whole thing, bits and pieces of it. And guess what? We've all learned of the last six months, at least, that there is always somebody recording because sound bites keep appearing. We have a message in the in the chat from Daniel Wu asking Brad, didn't the WPTRE play the main event WPT tour in Montreal? And he has a picture there from four or five years ago. Yeah. So uh, I don't think he's still here, but the, yeah, no, I addressed that to him. 
No, I was oh, specifically speak. I was specifically speaking to Club WPT sending satellite winners out of the country. Period. Uh, that's what I was referencing. That that was, to my knowledge, the first time that Club WPT sending satellite winners and packages out of the country, not including the void voyage. Perfect. Uh, Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they've been to Canada. It's been a few years since they've been to Canada. Uh, they used to go to. I know they went to Falls View. They went to uh, what's that other one up? Up. I think it is Montreal. Um, they had a. Isn't there a, a best bet in Canada as well? I could be mistaken. That I think they used to go to, and there was one other one that I know that they went to. Might have been the one in Montreal. What are some of the casinos in Montreal? Do you guys know offhand? I don't know, but I don't know if it's best bet. But did they go to Calvary? Ah, uh, I can't remember. It's been Calgary. Calgary. It's been about Calgary. five years or so since they've been to. Maybe even ten years since they've been to um uh canada um but um falls view is actually on this side of the on the border isn't it or is it on the other side which one falls view the one over there and by niagara i don't remember if it's on our side or the Can canadian side i can't remember no i think the falls is on the american side right it, it, you might be right i was just thinking about that yeah, yeah yeah i think you're right i think it is on the american side yeah, because Niagara Falls is New York. It's not Canada. So, yeah, I'm assuming Barry might be able to correct me because I'm stupid stone, but I'm almost positive it's New no, York. No, I, so. I think you are correct. I think you are correct. He's Very good. Yeah. Um, fuck, I can't remember the... There was like two or three stops in Canada that I know they've went in the past. Uh, they haven't been there in a while, but... But, yeah, uh, Club WPT will be sending some satellite winners to Canada... Uh, I'm I'm actually happy that they're going back to Canada. They haven't been there in a while, and I think that their Canada has a huge draw of poker. You know, I think uh, poker players, and I think that it's a good place for WPT to you know, you know, go put your mark back there again. And I know for these tours and circuits, it's not that simple. It's not like oh, well, we want to go there, so we're just going to go there. There's a lot more that goes on. They have to have you know, a business, a working business relationship with the, the, you know, the host casinos and card rooms. And there's a lot of red tape that goes in between, um, getting there, you know, um, you know, uh, think about what's happened at the bike recently. Uh, WSOP is not going there anymore. Well, ironically, what happened in the last couple of years, they changed uh, ownership park. It's like park West or park something parks. I don't know, but things like that, um, just completely change the dynamics of things. And um, so I know it's tough for them just to say, oh, we want to go there and then just go there. <clears throat> but um, I'm glad they're going back to Canada for sure. Is it Montreal where um, Mike Sexton won his first bracelet or am I making that up? What's that? Is it Montreal where Mike Sexton won his first bracelet or am I making that up? Uh, not sure. I'm trying to think of the property too, Sherry. There's a pro there's a property in Canada that gets a tournament every year that's like millions of dollars for first. It's it's got to be parks. I'm trying to think. Nick Nikki Palma played it a couple of years ago, and there was controversy up there. I, I always and this guy Mike Leo always wins it. Let me look it up. Yeah, for some reason, I think that Mike Sexton won his first. It's hard for me to Playground, look that's what it's called. Oh, Playground. Got... Yes, Playground. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. yes. They Her usually have crazy York, series that go on. That's why poker is definitely alive and well in Canada. Yes. And they have a series going on right now in upstate New York. It's in Turning Stone. It's obviously not Canada. Right. But you guys should see the turnouts that that gets. And that's definitely closer to Canada than it is to like anything else, like the other regular states in the United States. Right, right. You're, you're going to get some Canadian draw for sure. Thank you for that. And I think Parks is in New York or Connecticut or something. It's like Parks is like right outside of Philly, Sherry. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of right by Sunflower, man. 
Thank you. Wink, wink. I'm joking. <laughs> I was just passing it up. I was just going to sl- smooth on over that comment. <laughs> All about positivity. I love you, Donna. I promise. Pops is about an hour and 10 minutes from New York. Thank you. Obviously, I need to make a trip up there so I can get more familiar with those. You should. The action there is crazy. The property is like nothing like spectacular, but the action there, Sherry, is like fantastic. Like ridiculous. Um, I'm I'm going to make a trip. Believe me. The playground, uh, the WPT uh, used to go there. for. They went there for a couple of years. That was one of the older Canadian uh, stops that they went to. If I, if I remember correctly, I think they went there not too long after they launched the room. Uh, the new room was relatively new, if I remember. But, uh, yeah, that was one of the rooms. I think what you're thinking of, Sherry, Where is, is it, Brad? Is it in Montreal, do you know? I, I think that one is in Montreal. That's the one. Um, yeah, it is. It's in Montreal. That's the one where Mike Sexton, I think, won the WPT. Uh, is what you're thinking of. Uh, okay. Okay. I think that's what you're thinking. Um, if I'm not mistaken. I just remember for some reason, I have it in my mind that he won something big in Montreal. <laughs> yeah. I think Tony Dunst was calling the, the, the tournament at that time. I think you're right. I yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Rest in peace, Mike Sexton, of course. Uh, definitely a legend in the game. Yeah, he was a legend. Mike Sexton really was a straight legend. For sure. What a great ambassador of poker. 100%. 100%. Uh, you know, he's uh, just got, like, the perfect voice, and he'd have, like the, the, like, the perfect inflections. Like, it was like, you know, the guy was just a natural at calling games and – it was the absolute. He was uh, good at poker too. He was literally oh, yeah. fucking ridiculous at poker oh, too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure, for sure. He uh, um, he won a WPT right before they started the Mike Sexton Cup. Well, I don't think it was called the Mike Sexton Cup then, but the year before, uh, he the WPT like had their official trophy. He won a, a big WPT event, uh, or maybe it wasn't a WPT event. It was the event that the WP took over and the following year is what I'm thinking. Um, and he, um, you know, he's definitely a crusher. He made several final tables in the WPT. Um, solid player all the way around. Just awesome guy. Even I yeah. wish I would have met him. I wish I would have met him. Well, it's funny you said that cause I was in a room and he was probably six feet from me one time. And I was busy talking with someone. He was busy talking with someone. And by the time there was a break, so to speak, that I could possibly approach him, he was already already walking the other way. So I did not get a chance to speak with him. But I've always admired him as a poker ambassador, as an announcer, and his sense of humor. And he was um, just so good for the game of poker. Couldn't uh, agree more. Definitely. Um, yeah, I uh, heard nothing but great things about the dude. I'm very fortunate. Uh, uh, the last win um, event in December, not this one that just passed, but the, the one before that, the first win in, at the WPT, or WPT at the win, I was very fortunate to meet Doyle Brunson at his book signing, and that was a pretty special experience. And... Uh, very unfortunate, you know, obviously, you know, he was getting up there in age, but right. also a legend. I uh, was just glad I got to t- shake his hand and I got an autograph book from him and um, super cool, man. It was very special to me. Very cool. All right, guys, I got to go to work. Wish me luck or Sherry and Donna, I'm going to need PayPal money to get home. So I'll be texting <laughs> you guys in two hours. Hey, Soph, you're not going any PayPal because I can't do PayPal. <laughs> All right, guys. Yes, have brother. a good day, guys. Good, good luck, luck Maddie. Darling. Good Crush luck, it. Bud. Crush it. Absolutely crush it.
All right, you guys, I'm going to close this space down because I really um, just wanted to do a short space this morning and um, catch up a little bit with with everybody. And I think we've done that. And I appreciate y'all listening. Yeah, thanks for holding space, Sherry. Thank it's been you. Nice to to everybody. Thank you for co-hosting, love. And Brad, have a great day. Everybody that tuned in, I appreciate you and have a great day, everybody. Bye. Speak soon. Bye.